How you doing? So today we're going to toy a G-Cook nymph um, that's called a Vietz Caddis. Now the Vietz Caddis originated in the Czech Republic and has been a stable first team starter for me, especially in springtime fishing deep coloured water for a good few seasons now and it's a it would feature in a lot of um, Nymphers fly boxes. Very simple, easy pattern, and this is my take on it, and uh, one well worth having in the box for March coming in 2020. In device, I have a size 16 Duhaku G hook, and I have a 3.5 mil gold tungsten bead super glued up onto the hook to keep it in place. Um, this can be tied. This fly can be tied with. Um, silver beads copper beads black beads whichever you prefer um the gold for me is the the one i prefer onto that hook i'm going to put some tommy fly uv reflective tying thread this is number one <clears throat> and i'm just going to start it off there cut away the waste and this is for the tag okay i'm going to form a little loop there now and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that loop in a minute the reason why I put a loop in Tommy fly can be a little bit well it's a fantastic reflect, tying thread, reflective tying thread it can be just a little bit of so, a little bit soft for tags so I leave a loop sticking out the back and what I'll do is I'll form my tag It's lovely flat floss, very intense colours. Once I've formed my tag, I take this loop, double strand, and I pull it up over the back of the fly. And this is just to keep it nice and secure, stop it from slipping down that hook, and stop it from fraying too easy when the throat start biting on it. Take away that piece of waste, <clears throat> and whip finish off. That's our tag in place. And of course you can use Globe right number 12 um, or 11 as well for that. Whichever you prefer for me. I like the intensity of Tommy Fly colours. Next, tie in my usual Kevlar silk. Tidy that up. And for the tail, we're going to use a bit of uh, English Grey Partridge Natural. So select a piece of that. And tie it with the natural curvature of the feather facing up and away from the hook so you get that nice natural kick up off the feather tidy away some of the waste and just do the rest of the trade now for the rib i am going to use something that is new by savoya and it is a flat wire so this is medium wide flat wire it comes in several different sizes it comes in lots of different colors we have it on our online store and um, the reason why this stuff is absolutely fantastic especially when you're putting wire over a dubbing so there's going to be a hairs or dubbing on this fly and if i just put in round wire sometimes the round wire can get a bit lost in a dubbing it cuts down through the dubbing um, a bit too easily and it doesn't stand out quite as quite as good and um, with with a flat wire it doesn't cut through the dubbing quite as easy and um, stands out much better and it is very it's a lot stronger than a fine tinsel so just going to add in that wire there secure it in well and then i'm going to take a little pinches of Natural hair zero dubbing to form the body. As usual, small amounts to begin. Add more if you need. It's easier to add than to take it out. Dub it on nice and tight. Slide it up the hook and begin to form your body. Now I would tie these for early season in 16 3.5 mils size 16 4 mils you can even go up to size 14 jigs 
Um, really good early season fly. If I think I'm going to be fishing really deep water, I would put a layer of flat lead in under there as well, just to give that extra bit of weight and even, as I say, go up to four mil beads, it'll, um, they'll certainly get you down to where you need to be. So once I've added in a little bit of hair dubbing, I'm happy to have enough in there. Like so. I then take my nice flat wire and rib it in the opposite direction. As you can see, it sits out lovely. It doesn't cut through the doesn't cut through the dubbing body. Quite as easy as it. And just like a wire, just give a couple of twists, break it away. Really good stuff. Make sure to check it out. <coughs> now, before I finish off the flight, as usual, I give it a bit of a brush back towards the bead, just to dig it out with the finer bristles, these finer point bristles of the dubbin brush. And then once I'm happy that I've got enough dug out, we then just, with the longer bristles, brush it back. And we're not putting any extra stress on the tying of the fly. And there we have a nice body. A nice spiky body. <clears throat> with our wire rib. Still quite visible. Okay. Now, for the collar of this fly, um, we use the, the Spectra Dubbins. The Spectra Dubbins. Number 46 is probably one of the most popular ones. Some guys tie with number 96. Um, if I was tying a silver bead, I would put number 96 on it. A copper bead, I would put number 46. It's kind of a personal thing. You get a confidence in a number 15 can be quite good there as well. Um, I say it's a confidence thing and, you know, you, you get to have confidence in what you do. For the gold one, I use number 335. Spectra, hen Spectra Dublin. It's the colour I like for the gold one. So I take a small pinch of the hen spectra, number 335, and I dub it on there. And I put it in there, right behind the bead. Another small little pinch. He was at the World Championships in the Czech Republic many years ago when I came across the first came across the Veeds Caddis. And I say ever since then it's been in my box. Definitely a starting forward on me spring springtime setups. And uh, I think it's nearly one of those flies now, similar to the black Frenchie. It's in every uh, modern infant angler's fly box. So once again, just brushing it out, just getting it nice and fishy looking ready to start catching a few fish and there we go very simple very very effective Jacob Milf Paul the Weeds Callus thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it tying and the fishing just as much